James, you brought us into your super secret storage location. This place is incredible. Just walk us around, tell us a little bit about what you've got hidden in here. Sure, sure. So this is one of our two main storage buildings. Uh, this one's over three floors. Um, completed last year, we've got a capacity for 150 cars and we're at about 130 in this one. And the other building is 160 cars, which we've had for seven or eight years. So um, it's a variety, it's huge. So lots of cars. Uh, lot of lots cars. of F40s, obviously we're the king of F40s. So I think at the moment there's about 16 F40s dotted about uh, in the various stores. But yeah, behind us an MC12. So I can't remember last count how many MC12s are in the UK. Probably only three left. Um, a Carrera GT, which is midnight blue with um, Ascot interior, which is the only one in the world. So paint sample midnight blue is actually a UK car from new. And um, yeah, we've looked after it for a long time. Do you know really, what? Really I'm special. actually going to say that's quite pretty, yeah. which is going to shock Darren. But you Darren. can't afford it though. I can't afford it, but it's pretty. It is. I don't particularly like it. And like it works watches. really well, especially under these lights. Yeah, so, it does. Yeah. It's here for a reason. Um, it's awesome. Then we've got a 250 short wheelbase, I think. Okay, they built 170 short wheelbases. I think we have five or six in our care. And there are only 11 right-hand drive cars and we've got five of the, no, four now. We did have last year five of the right-hand drive cars. So again, this is a reflection of where the business started. It was 50s yeah. and 60s cars that we were restoring. So pretty. That's one that we totally restored. A 250 GT Zagato over there, which is um, actually an Eleanor that was rebodied by Zagato in the 90s, but the running gear is exactly the same as a period bodied Zagato 250 TDF. So. Um, quite a special car that and then yeah lots and lots of f40s a couple of four cans it's um i love i love it's like um christmas isn't it having and a special... presents that you don't quite know what's in underneath the wrapper i'm just going to show you this this one here so this is a 288 gto Ooh. but oh, yes. it's a very special car because it's one of only six oh, that was converted yeah. by pin and farina for the sultan of brunei to right hand drive and at that time it was um, it was repainted in black as well, so this is a car that we uh, were very lucky to very. Um, to obtain. It's probably about seven or eight years ago now, uh, but we've sold it a couple of times and it lives with us. So you know, again, it's really really nice to have. And there's also one of the seven or so right-hand drive F40s that were converted for the same family, uh, which is Matt Gray, also lives with us, which is probably in the other building, I think. Um, but yeah, that's just cool and it's just different and it works so well. I wish they'd done more black 288 GTOs. It, do, it does actually look Stunning. gorgeous, doesn't it? Stunning. I love these old Ferraris. This, I, I, this is, this is, yeah. I mean, I wish I could afford them. Well, I can't afford that either, actually. So I'm just dreaming. <laughs> but it's amazing how the market's caught up. Yeah. So, you know, 288 GTO now is, let's say, three million pounds plus. I'm not even sure you could buy a car for three million now. You know, so they've it's become insane. so sought after. Um, Diablo, White Diablo, which is an SV, and uh, we're really seeing like a great increase in appreciation for, for Lamborghini Diablos because Countach's and Muros have become so valuable. It's like, well, actually, these are relatively yeah. rare as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did lots of different iterations of Diablos, so it's quite collectible. You can have three or four different Diablos that are all different in their own right. Yeah. Oh, here's just a GT40. There is, yeah, this is a, a very special GT40 that actually we're about. Uh, Oh, We're going to be selling this car in the next few months, but it's been owned by the same owner since 1980. So he's had it a very long time, 43 years. And um, with GT40s, because they're race cars, this is actually rare in the fact that it has its original chassis, original gearbox, it has its original engine block with it, the matching numbers one, although not fitted. Plus all of its original bodywork at the back there, you see the doors are on the car. And, you know, so it's a really original GT40. They all had hard lives, mm. fires, crashes, replacement bits and pieces. So it's quite rare to, to find that. And then this space here is actually uh, a studio. So we have printed mm. a wall that looks like our courtyard at the main office with this light box so that in the winter or cars that are in storage that we're selling for clients that we can photograph in here in our own studio environment, which is super Fantastic. useful, especially with Carhuna, we are using this as a way to video the cars so yeah. that there's a bit of a profile on the cars online as well. God, and there's more floors. There are more floors. So in this there building, we've floors. got two more upstairs. So we'll head on up. So second floor up here. Oh, I love these. I love these. CLK DTM. So the this sort of type of Mercedes, Black Series or DTM, yeah. really, really hot on the market at the moment. Um, every DTM we've had has flown out the door 
CLK63 Black Series. In fact, we've actually, ending this weekend, we've got a CLK63 Black Series in an online auction. Um, SL, SL Black Series, you know, all of them are really popular. I think, again, it's a bit like the Diablos that we talked about. A huge grin on your face, look at this, you love this. I do. I think it's quite a collectible set though. You know, I think with prices having gone up. You don't you think I could use this as a series, daily driver? If I had the money? Yeah, yeah, I think you could. Yeah. But the owner of this uses it when he comes over to the UK, he's overseas. You know what, see, I could daily. get the dogs in if they had Velcro jackets. <laughs> and just <laughs> stuck them. <laughs> oh, and another. This is, so this is really nice. This is a, an original so blue Ford GT with actually delivery mileage. We've just sold it, so it's just come into storage. Um, delivery, wow. Really cool. Now, what's your view on delivery mileage? Because, I mean, do you not think that a car should be driven? I mean, that, that, what do you think about people buying cars to do nothing with? I'm I mean, obviously it's great for you from a storage perspective. <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I think that my view on it is, if someone didn't have the opportunity to buy one brand new when they were new, why not let them do that today? And that's mm -hmm. why the cars with delivery mileage are worth more. So I, find, I don't think that's unacceptable, but you know, I do think the cars should be driven, but you can't drive everything. And you know, there is, there is a, an argument for art. You know, have, why not have some really nice cars that are absolutely out the box, brand new, with very low mileage? I don't have a problem with it. I, I, you know, whenever I post something like this on Instagram, I just wait for all the mm. comments. And uh, I have been a bit cheeky with a, a few people. You know, I, I genuinely had a guy that was, because of COVID, was absolutely flat out with work for three years. So his car was delivery mileage because he was working so hard on trying to solve some problems that it's delivery mileage. And I said, you know, everyone that was like, it's a crime that this car is delivery mileage. It's like, well, the guy hasn't been able to drive it. You yeah. know, he had problems because of COVID. It does happen. But, you know, obviously it's nice to see cars out and about and being used. And it's, it, it's I think what's really refreshing about that is that the way it's changed. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> I think what's really refreshing is the way it's changed in the last five years in particular, that people really are using their cars more, which is why we see the likes of Caffeine in the Machine and yeah. Supercar Driver and all these different clubs becoming so much more popular because people are like, what am I going to do on a Saturday? Yeah, and yeah. Go, it's become a community. Meet, and, coffee, yeah, and it's become yeah. much more than it ever was. You know, five years ago, that didn't exist. You know, we, I, think, I always think that we invented the open day because in 2008, we were a bit short of workshop work. So we said, let's open our doors, get everyone in. And, and we had all these people turn up in their cars and it was like, for the, for the next 11 months, everyone's like, when's your next open day? When's your next open day? We want to go somewhere in our car. Whereas now every weekend there's stuff you can do. And, mm. You know, we saw it a few weekends ago where there was like multiple Bista Scramble, Kahuna Pop-Up yeah. Museum, Salon Privé in London, you know, and people were just going from one to the other to the other and enjoying their cars. So I yeah. think it's great. I don't have a problem with delivery mileage. Uh, I think the solutions have two. One yeah. delivery <laughs> mileage and one yeah. that's yeah. a user. Used that one before. Um, and so, yeah, the rest of this floor is, is just the same, you know, cars in storage being looked after by us. We will make sure that all the cars are insured, taxed, MOT'd, serviced. So the beauty of us is because we have our own workshop facilities, you know, 90% of these cars will service and the rare ones like a Carrera GT will send to Porsche GB, but yeah. most of it's serviced by us. So it's, again, it's a one-stop shop for a client. They don't need to think about transporting a car somewhere or or having you know, someone else do it. And it's just low cars that go on the next floor. Yeah, yeah, so there's one more floor and, and that really is pure storage. We'll, we'll have a quick look. Okay. So this is the top floor of this building. And uh, up here, this is just mainly V8 Ferraris. <laughs> so there's Speciales, Pistas, Challenge Stradales, Scuderias, um, which actually these are our most popular storage clients because these are the right. cars that go out the most. They're the most usable cars. Yeah. I think Ferrari have done a great thing with the lightweight V8 thing. You know, it's uh, been really cool. But this is a very cool pair. So we've got two white. Oh. So we've got oh, six, wow. 16M in red. It, well, sorry, 16M in white with red interior and red roof. Yeah. And then That's almost, nice. not owned by the same person, but almost matching. This super cool white challenge Shadali with uh, Lexham windows, which is super rare. I think it was about 90 cars in total were built with those. Very like, much like an early F40. And uh, just looks so good, doesn't it? It looks like a race car. I love the Challenge Shadali, it's just so these... raw. Wow. It's incredible. These are very collectible cars, these ones. And these are used, you said? These are used, these, are these cars just, get used yeah. a lot, yeah. 
they um, barely, I mean, they look absolutely pristine. Immaculate. Yeah. So then the rest of this floor is just more of the same uh, with a few more Porsches at the end. And a few more black car covers. Oh, yeah. They're the black sheep of the family. Yeah. Well, those are actually, so Jeremy, with his business, Cossie and Blue Chip, uh, he rents he, half of this floor from us upstairs. So those, those, are, those his, are his ones he's in our care. Yeah, in the black, exactly. black department. Exactly. Well, yeah. James, thank you so much for thank showing so us much. around. The place incredible. is absolutely incredible. And um, I'm lost for words, actually. I can't believe it. No. Lost for words. Right, well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.